and shortly thereafter at T-minus 35 minutes. The SpaceX team has already completed loading fuel onto the second stage, and we're nearing completion of first stage fuel load. That'll wrap up at about T-minus six minutes. Big loading going on right now is liquid oxygen. That's underway on both the first and second stages. We're about 75% full on first stage, and only about 15% full on second stage. We just started loading a few minutes ago. We'll finish loading liquid oxygen between T minus three and T minus two minutes. We're also loading helium gas onto storage vessels located on both the first and second stage. We'll use this helium to pressurize the tanks to replace the propellant that's pulled out of the tanks by the Merlin engine turbo pumps. On top of Falcon 9, as you can see on the monitor, is the Dragon spacecraft. Dragon team is getting ready. They began their auto sequence at T minus 35 minutes. That's when we synchronized timing between Dragon and the Falcon 9. And now they're undergoing last checks to make sure the systems are all healthy. The next big step for Dragon is transfer to internal power at T minus eight minutes. We come off of ground power and we use the batteries on board Dragon. The range is ready to support. The Air Force tells us the airspace and the sea surface is clear for launch. And finally on the weather, as you can see from the camera views, Blue skies, upper altitude winds look good. We've been using balloons to check out those winds. The only thing we're watching right now is ground level winds. We're up around 20 miles an hour, but we've still got some margin before we hit a ground limit. So crossing our fingers that the winds continue to be good for the last 10 minutes. Finally, on a historical note, this week will mark the eighth anniversary since we flew the first Dragon for NASA, our Cot C-1 mission back in December 2010, which was a precursor to today's resupply missions. All told, it's been an amazing journey for SpaceX, and so at T-minus nine minutes, 20 seconds and counting, all systems are go. Our Dragon spacecraft has been flying for six years now, and today it's the only vehicle flying that can deliver significant cargo both to and from the International Space Station, and it's been an exciting journey to get to where we are today. In 2010, SpaceX became the first private company to send a spacecraft to orbit and then return it to the Earth. And then two years later, in 2012, Dragon became the first privately developed spacecraft to visit the space station. Since then, SpaceX has made a total of 16 trips to the station, uh, 15 of those as official resupply missions, and we are under contract with NASA for a total of 26 cargo resupply missions. We're currently just flying cargo missions, but very soon we'll be flying humans to space as part of NASA's commercial crew program with our first uncrewed demonstration mission, Demo-1, targeted for January of next year. Today, Dragon will be carrying dozens of research payloads to the space station, including research in the National Laboratory operated by the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, otherwise known as CASIS. There are more than 20 payloads included on this mission, sponsored by the National Lab. In fact, this mission represents the largest number of payloads ever delivered to the National Lab during a single launch to the space station. The National Lab payloads represent a diverse group of research investigations, all of which are intended to benefit life here on Earth. Let's take a look at some of that groundbreaking research from CASIS that will be aboard this CRS-16 mission. SpaceX's 16th resupply mission to the International Space Station is primed and packed with an incredible amount of research that has the capacity to benefit life on Earth. More than 20 payloads are sponsored by the U.S. National Laboratory on the International Space Station. Let's get an idea about some of those payloads that are associated with this mission. Budweiser will send its third experiment to station with implementation partner Space Tango. This payload will examine the steeping, germination, and kilning processes associated with malting barley. Results from this research could help the company develop new malt barley varieties that are more tolerant to extreme stress environments. Corrosion can lead to inefficiencies in products and cause costly damage. In an experiment to study corrosion causing microbial biofilms on Earth and on station, Nalco Champion will monitor the rate of microbial corrosion as a function of cell density and activity. Results could shed light on new methods to effectively mitigate against microbial corrosion both on Earth and on station. Startup company Lambda Vision seeks to enhance the manufacturing process of a retinal implant designed to restore vision to those who are blinded by retinal degenerative diseases. The implant consists of multiple layers of a light-activated protein, and production in microgravity could improve overall uniformity and the stability of the multi-layer system. 
Earlier this year, the ISS National Lab partnered with Marvel Entertainment for the Guardians of the Galaxy Space Station Challenge. Hundreds of students submitted flight concepts based on the physical characteristics of Rocket and Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy. And two projects were selected that will launch on this mission. One student experiment is looking at aeroponic farming and the other at a dental glue that is activated by UV light. Sepsis, or systemic inflammation, is usually caused by exposure of an open wound to contaminated sources and is a costly healthcare burden. Tympanogen seeks to leverage microgravity to improve the process of antibiotic release from a novel patch they have developed to treat wounds and reduce the occurrence and severity of sepsis. This launch represents a diverse mixture of science that has the capacity to benefit life on Earth while leveraging microgravity. To learn more about all of the payloads associated with this mission, please visit ISSNationalLab.org and Go Dragon. This is, this is just a small sample of the dozens of research experiments that Dragon will take up to the International Space Station. You can follow along using at space underscore station on Twitter for more information on the exciting microgravity research happening there. We are coming up on T-minus five minutes and continuing to count down for launch in our one-second window. And on these last few minutes, Falcon 9 is performing final checkouts to make sure all the primary systems will work in flight. We're covering propulsion, communications, avionics systems. Now, currently at T-minus seven minutes, we began the engine chill-in. Valves that previously were closed were opened. That allowed fuel and liquid oxygen to flow out of the propellant tanks down to the turbo pumps. That cold liquid oxygen chilled in the turbo pump on each of the nine Merlin first stage engines. We might hear an announcement in the countdown a little later on that the engines are sufficiently chilled in for launch. Currently, the, the uh, transport director Strongback is getting ready to move away from the first stage and second stage. It'll move back a couple of degrees and then hold there until launch. We're also in the middle right now of checking out the upper stage thrust vector control actuators. This is known as engine wiggle. We're physically moving the thrust chamber very slightly. That makes sure the guidance hardware is go for flight. The first stage engines will have a similar wiggle, but that's done just seconds before we ignite them. Now at T minus one minute, the flight computers will enter startup mode on the Falcon 9. That will guide the rocket through the rest of the countdown. You'll hear the launch director from SpaceX give a go for launch at T-minus 45 seconds. And then finally, a couple seconds before liftoff, the engines will be ignited. And at T-zero, the rocket will be released from the hold down clamps. And at that point, the strong back will then recline the remainder of the way from the rocket, clearing it for liftoff and flight into orbit. On the Dragon side, the team has transferred to internal power. They've performed their final checks. Just watching right now, making sure everything is go for launch and the flight that will take us about three days to rendezvous with the space station. The Air Force range continues to be go and the weather continues to look good. So right now, everything looks good for an on-time launch, just under T minus three minutes and counting. Let's share in the last minutes of Terminal Countdown. Stage two locks look complete. Vehicles on the turtle power. Crown gas close that starting.
Nines close out's complete. Dragon is in startup. Falcon Nines in startup. Stage two, press for flight. Go for launch. Stage one's at startup pressures. I'm gonna say 15 seconds. And Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Thirty-five seconds into flight, we've had a great liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40. Falcon 9 powered under the thrust of 1.7 million pounds. We're coming up on throttle bucket, preparing for maximum dynamic pressure. Propulsion reports that we are on target, throttle down, getting ready to pass new max Q. Vehicle is supersonic and experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. We're passing through the range where aerodynamic loads are greatest on Dragon Falcon 9. The Merlin engines are now throttling back up. Propulsion reports the first stage systems are nominal. Great views from the cameras here. The blue skies, a nice daylight launch, showing Falcon 9 with Dragon headed downrange. MVAC Call chill. out for MVAC engine chill. That means we are now chilling in the LOX turbo pump on the upper stage engine, getting ready for its ignition about two and a half minutes into flight. Great view looking back from the first stage camera. Cape Canaveral in the background as we head northeast towards the International Space Station orbit. Next major activity is coming up in about 25 seconds. We'll have shutdown of the nine first stage engines. We'll get stage separation and ignition of the second stage to propel Falcon 9 and Dragon into Earth orbit. We also hope to see on the left side the first stage flip around and light three engines and to begin the path of coming back to landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. Nico. Successful stage separation, ignition of the upper stage engine. We've also seen the first stage has done its flip maneuver and the boost back burn has begun. We have lit three engines on the first stage. That's reducing the forward velocity and we'll be bringing it back towards Cape Canaveral. Shutdown of the boost back burn is coming up in about 10 seconds. Second stage continues to look good on power. On the right hand side, you may have seen an object passing the nozzle of the upper stage engine. That's the Dragon nose cap that's generated at this point in flight. We've heard the call out shutdown on the boost back burn. First stage has completed the first of three planned burns that will result in return to landing zone one on Cape Canaveral just a few miles from where the first stage just lifted off. You can see the grid fins slowly opening. The large titanium fins, we allow them to open slowly. Uh, given the mass of the fins, we don't want them to open too rapidly. 
Second stage continues to look good. First stage good. T plus four minutes into flight. All systems are go. As you just heard from John, we had a beautiful clear liftoff of the Falcon 9 from uh, Cape Canaveral. And right now, there's two things happening simultaneously. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see a camera that's on the top of that Falcon 9 first stage, currently pointed down the length of the first stage. You can see the titanium grid fins, uh, and that will be executing its re-entry burn at about T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds. And then on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the engine nozzle of that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Uh, that is currently accelerating the Dragon spacecraft to match orbit with the International Space Station for its eventual birthing maneuvers. It's an interesting semantic point that the process of connecting the Dragon to the space station is called birthing with an E. And that's because it is brought to the space station by the Canada Arm 2 while docking actually refers specifically to two spacecraft that can connect without any external assistance. This stems from old shipping days in which ships would come into the harbor and dock themselves under their own power, while larger ships, which aren't able to easily navigate in harbors, are met by tugboats and then berthed. So for the space station, the robotic Canada Arm 2 is like a tugboat for the Dragon spacecraft. That Dragon spacecraft will make its way to orbit after it separates from the top of the second stage uh, coming up later in the mission. But right now we are focused on both that second stage still accelerating and the first stage coming back down for a landing. Next step up for the first stage is going to be a re-entry burn. That's when it's going to light three of its Merlin engines uh, to slow itself down as it hits the denser regions of the atmosphere. You can actually see on the left hand side of your screen that is Cape Canaveral and the coastline of Florida. Uh, you can see that first stage is oriented towards Cape Canaveral and currently about to decelerate. That re-entry burn will be happening in 30 seconds. In addition to those uh, re-entry burns, you can, oh, you actually saw some uh, what looked look like frozen condensation floating off the, the side of the first stage. Uh, in addition to those burns, the first stage also uses those titanium grid fins to control itself and cold gas thrusters, which are those uh, bursts of, of uh, air you can see periodically issuing from that first stage. Let's watch the re-entry burn happen in about five seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. You can see all three, uh, or all three of the nine of those Merlin engines light up right now, uh, executing that re-entry burn and slowing that first stage down. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And we just heard the call out for an entry burn shutdown. Landing burn will begin, that's the next phase of landing, at T plus seven minutes and 35 seconds. We currently have an unbelievable view of Cape Canaveral uh, from the bird's eye view. It is absolutely amazing. I've been at Cape Canaveral for these landings before where you can feel those sonic booms in your chest. It is just so exciting along the Space Coast. Stage one transonic. Stage one landing bird start. Stage two continues along the nominal trajectory. Right now, stage two is currently on a nominal trajectory. This is the primary mission to get that Dragon spacecraft into orbit. Right now, you can see that uh, second stage engine is performing nominally with uh, the Merlin vacuum engine glowing red hot.
Uh, you may have heard the SpaceX team cheering in the background. Uh, it appears that the Stage 1 of the Falcon 9 has made a water landing <laughs> off the coast of Cape Canaveral. Still waiting on exact word for what happened there. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, the primary mission today is to bring the Dragon to the International Space Station. Right now, that mission is going spectacularly. All telemetry from Stage 2 looks nominal, and it looks like we are approaching a good orbit. Uh, waiting for confirmation on that soon. Now the Dragon spacecraft is set to arrive at the International Space Station in just a few days, where our uh, astronauts will be conducting that groundbreaking research that it is carrying up. And right now we did have confirmation of a good orbit from that, uh, that second stage with the Dragon. Uh, right now the next phase of the mission is going to be uh, Dragon separation from the top of the second stage. Uh, we'll be able to see, you can actually see on your right hand side of your screen, that's a view inside the trunk, uh, the unpressurized cargo section of the Dragon. And I believe you can actually see some of the science experiments that are in, uh, in the trunk right there. It's an exciting capability for the Dragon trunk to be able to store unpressurized cargo in, and take that up to the International Space Station. It's a very unique capability. And there it is. You can see the successful separation of that Dragon spacecraft from the top of the second stage. Um, the trunk is open to the bottom. Uh, it's an unpressurized spacecraft, and I believe those are the two uh, science experiments we're currently going to be mounted on the outside of the International Space Station. Um, but yeah, so the next uh, Dragon still has a long way to go. Uh, the next phase of its mission is going to be extending the solar arrays. So you can actually see on your screen there's uh, two kind of bumps on the side of that trunk. Uh, those are the folded up solar arrays. And in, uh, I believe at 12 minutes and 30 seconds, those solar arrays are going to extend and unfurl so that the Dragon can uh, start harvesting solar power and make its way the rest of the way to the International Space Station. Now, as you mentioned earlier, we've got some cargo inside the trunk of that spacecraft, which you could see as it was pulling away. Uh, we have two different experiments. The first one is the JEDI spacecraft, and that's JEDI with a G. It stands for the Global Ecosystem Dynamics Investigation. Uh, the JEDI spacecraft will actually measure and create 3D maps of Earth's tropical and temperate forests. These measurements will help scientists determine how much carbon is stored in the world's forests. Also inside Dragon's trunk is the Robotic Refueling Mission 3, known as RRM3. The investigation will demonstrate technologies to store and transfer liquid methane, a type of cryogenic liquid, uh, for, in space for the first time. That will help NASA develop capabilities to service and refuel spacecraft in orbit set for long-duration space flights. And obviously, we here at SpaceX have a interest in long-term duration space flights for our eventual plans to send humans to Mars. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of this research helps us, and we're excited to help NASA bringing that research up to the International Space Station. Uh, like I was saying earlier, we are currently waiting for the Dragon Solar Array deploy coming up in about 30 seconds, 30 or 45 seconds. Uh, those solar panels are covered by shrouds on the side, uh, carbon fiber shrouds. And so we might be able to get some video, hopefully, of uh, those shrouds popping off and those solar arrays extending. Shortly after the solar array deploy, we won't see this, but the next step for Dragon is to open its GNC bay door. That stands for Guidance, Navigation, and Control Door. It's sort of like Dragon opening its eyes, uh, exposing its sensors to space so it can find and lock onto the station and make its way the rest of the way towards the ISS's orbit. And as you can see right there, that is a uh, confirmation of uh, Dragon's solar panels uh, de deploying from the side of that trunk. Um, this is excellent news. It means that Dragon is now able to power itself all the way the rest of the way to the space station. Dragon is now on its way to the space station. When Dragon arrives in just a couple of days, the spacecraft and the space station will establish a direct communications link, and then Dragon will slowly approach pausing at several checkpoints to ensure that everything is still going as expected. Eventually, as Dragon approaches closer and closer, the European Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gerst will reach out and capture the Dragon. Next, ground commands will be sent to Mission Control or from Mission Control in Houston for the space station's robotic arm to reach out, rotate, and install it on the bottom of the space station's Harmony module. Well, 13 and a half minutes since liftoff when that entire rocket was at Cape Canaveral. We had some great views. The weather cooperated today. The ground winds weren't too high. We were able to launch right out the opening of the window. You saw ascent, great stage separation. We did get some great views of the first stage and the grid fins coming back. But as you heard from some of the background noise and comments, the first stage did land in the water. 
Now the good news is we've got a lot of telemetry from it, so we'll be able to understand what happened and work to improve reliability as we always do here at SpaceX. Second stage went into great orbit. It was really precise. Dragon you saw separate, and now the solar ray is coming out. All told, another great day for SpaceX and NASA. Dragon's arrival, capture, and installation uh, to the International Space Station will be streamed live on Saturday, December 8th on NASA TV and on SpaceX.com forward slash webcast. Dragon will spend about five weeks attached to the space station before returning to Earth with cargo and research. Please follow NASA and SpaceX on our social media uh, pages for ongoing updates. Uh, I personally will be covering that uh, early morning gra grapple and capture, uh, so please tune in for that on Saturday morning. And uh, please thank you to NASA, the range, the FAA, and you, the viewer, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate your support for these launches. Until next time. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. 